but I'll have to get my drink. Good cow. Gosh, I'm amazed. <laughs> I just tried to make sure we get we don't we don't I've lose never it. done an interview like no, this. No. I mean, well, not nor have I. I mean, I've never done any interviews at all. So, so actually, I'd like it to be more of a conversation. Well, well, Would hoping. that be okay? So that, in fact, we could. You, you're perfectly welcome to do it in Oratio Obliqua from the dinner table well, as well. Um, well, I'm. Well, see how it goes. See how it goes. Think um, of it as a profile interview, kind of. Yes. An, even, a, okay. an evening with. Um, just as you like. Um, I don't want to feel too much. What, the one thing they wanted me to ask yes, um, is, is, is whether you have any memories of life at the New Statesman yourself that you want to. Um, uh, not that I want to impart. No, okay, that's fine. It seems like a, a different world, a different magazine, and as if it happened to a different person in some ways. But I, I mean, I'd love them to interview me one day about it if they Yes, like, okay. For an edition about the role of the Statesman, but I'd really rather you and I focused on the. Fine. Pulse of the issue, which okay. is obviously our common cause. Okay, like okay, that. yeah. that's, uh, that, that, that suits but me. Tell them it's for goodwill, I'd happily um, reminisce one day. Okay, let And me, yes, I've got let, a lot. I was, it was a big deal in my life working yes, for that magazine. Yes, yes. Um, they do want me to talk politics to you, but I, I, no, I'm, not you that, like? I'm not that um, knowledgeable about politics. No, I've, been, I? I've been reading some of your stuff. Um, I mean, I've read uh, God is Not Great and Hitch 22, but I've been, I've been reading your latest um, collection of essays. Um, I must say, I'm just astounded, if I may say so, at your sheer erudition. And yeah. I mean, you seem to have read absolutely everything. I can't give anybody since Aldous Huxley, who's... who's oh, of, goodness. So well read. Well, it's, I tell you, it must come at the cost. It is maybe strikes some people as being broad, perhaps. But I think it's a bit, perhaps, at the cost of being a bit shallow. I mean, I became a journalist in a way because one didn't have to specialise. And um, I remember once going to a, an evening with Umberto Eco. Yes. You know, talking to Susan Sontag. Yes. And in that evening, the definition of the word polymath came up. Yes. And Umberto Eco said it was his ambition to be a polymath. And Susan, I think, challenged him. I think this is the way it went. And he said, because a polymath is someone who's interested in everything and in nothing else. <laughs> That's very good. And so I was encouraged by my sort of training in that way yes. to read widely, to flit and sip, rather, as Bertie puts it. And I think I've got a good memory for retention. I retain what's interesting to me. Yeah. But I don't have a lot of strategic depth in a lot of subjects or anything like that. I mean, for example, I, but I think I, I've got maybe an eye for what the appropriate allusion or cross-reference might be. Which you can, which you can be, pull up yes. with remarkable speed when you're in debate. But you do realise if you say a thing like that to me, it gives me very little to react to. I can't very well say. Yeah, I, I know. I do. I do thanks awfully. Um, I do understand that. Um, but I, a lot of reviewers have said it and to the point of embarrassing me by saying that I'm in the class of you know, Edmund Wilson or H.L. Mencken, it only does, or even George Orwell, it really does remind me of the fact that I'm not. And, but that it's something to at least have had, I suppose, the comparison made. I mean, it's mm. better than I expected mm. when I, oh, well, it, it when I started. Me, but with overwhelming force. Um, a, as an Orwell scholar, you must have a very particular view of North Korea, Stalin, Soviet Union. Yes. Um, that kind of thing. Yes. And you must get particularly irritated, perhaps even more than I am, by the, the c constant thing that we get, Stalin was an atheist. Oh, um, of course. Um, yes, which we don't absolutely know for sure that he was. We don't even know that for sure that he was, and Hitler would, almost certainly wasn't. Hitler was definitely not. Yes. It's possible that um, Himmler was. It's very unlikely. Uh, but it wouldn't make any difference either way. No, well, There's no mandate in atheism yes. for any particular politics absolutely. anyway. Absolutely, and in any case, the people who actually did Hitler's dirty work were almost all uh, religious. Well, I'm afraid that the SS um, relationship with the Catholic Church is something the Church still has to deal with and, you know, does not deny. I mean, there's Could a lot you talk of, a bit but about more about, about the Nazi period, yes. Yes, but, um, about the relationship with the Catholic Church. Well, look, and to, well, the way I put it is this. If you're writing about the history of the 30s and the rise of totalitarianism, you can take out the word fascist if you want for Italy, um, Portugal, Spain, um, Slovakia, 
Austria, you just put in extreme right Catholic party, you don't have a say. Yes. It's yes. almost a corollary. Yes. And it was almost all of those regimes were emplaced with the help of the Vatican and with understandings with the Holy See. That's not denied. Yes. These understandings actually persisted quite often after the Second World War was over. Yeah. And indeed extended to comparable regimes in Argentina and elsewhere yes. after yes. the war. Yes. So there's Notwithstanding no, individual priests who did who did good things. Not very but, many. But, but, but the Vatican as a whole. You, you would know their names if there had been more of them. They would have been discovered They'd and promoted. Been discovered. <laughs> ah, yes. When it comes to National Socialism, there's no question there's a mutation, a big one. The Nazis wanted their own form of worship. Just as they thought they were a super race, they wanted their own religion. Hitler was, of course, the votary of it, but they, they dug out the Norse gods, all kinds of extraordinary myths and legends from the old sagas and from the mythical history of Tacitus and things like that. And they wanted to control the churches. They were willing to make a deal with them. I mean, the first deal Hitler made was with the Catholic Church was the Concordat. Now, you know this. I mean, yeah, well, I, I... In exchange for control over things like the Catholics having a political party, which they agreed to dissolve, he got control over German education. It was a pretty good deal for him. The, um, the, the, the celebrations of his birthday were enacted by order from the pulpit. When, I'm sorry, how are you? Oh, hey, Leandro, how are you? Nice to see you. I'm sorry I'm in the middle of something. Okay, so I just It's say fantastic hi. to see you. Thank you. Um, when Hitler survived an assassination attempt, you know, prayers were said and so forth. But no, there's no doubt about it. They wanted control and they were willing to clash with the churches in order to do it. Yes. But to say that it was atheist, there's a new biography of Himmler, very interesting. He said um, by a good German historian, which I've been reading, saying you could be anything you liked in the SS. He didn't approve particularly. He wanted you to have an SS wedding if you could, say. <coughs> but, but I'm sorry I'm going too fast. No, okay. For myself. Um, yes. Wait, wait, have another drink. Have but um, wait, wait. you could be a Catholic, you could be a Protestant, you could be all, anything you liked, but you could not be an atheist. That's right. Absolutely. I, I didn't know that until I read this book. That. It's a new I did, German. I did know that. Very good, very meticulous new yes. German uh, historian. Atheism absolutely out of the What's question. What's his name? What's the name of the of the? Author, there can only be one new biography of Goebbels. It's of Himmler. Okay, Himmler. Okay. That's out in the last month or imminent. Okay, fine. Okay, and it's in cold print, and it doesn't surprise me. Um, and Nazism. If you took your, there's another example. The, the Führer oath. You swore on Almighty God that you would never break your oath to the Führer. Yes. Now, this, this is yes. not even secular. And there was also a, a grace things. before meals, wasn't yes, there? We I thank believe, Adolf believe, Hitler for the, this good food or whatever it was. Well, I believe there was. It's certain that the, you can hear the oath being taken. There are recordings of it. Yes. This, uh, Richard, is obviously it's, it's, it's a red herring. It's not even secular. No. They're changing the subject. But it comes over and over and over again. Yes. I mean, every single, practically every well, single... Well, then look at the rest of the axis. Yes. The Emperor of Japan is a god. Yes. Yes. This is not a secular yes. society. You um, take your oath of worship to him. Uh, Stalin was worshipped. And, well, you mentioned North Korea. I wrote a long piece. I know, yes. Saying yes. that it, it is, in every sense, a theocratic state. Yes. Um, except that it doesn't, as far as I know, it talks of the supernatural, in that the births of the Kim family are usually considered to be mysterious and accompanied by happenings. And the I great leader is still, is, still, is, still with us. is still with us. But it doesn't dead, specifically, yes. and I've rechristened it, I said it's a necrocracy. Yes, that's very good. Or a mausolocracy or a thanatocracy. Yes. It doesn't specifically say the afterlife, it must be said. But there's no possible way you could say it was a secular, let alone an atheist. Um, no. But attempts to found new religions should attract our scorn just as much as the alliances with the old ones do. Exactly. So what the odds yes. to us are now? Nothing. Exactly. I mean, yes. Of course we don't want another religion. Yes. And in any case... All they're said, saying is you can't say that Hitler was distinctively or specifically Christian. Maybe if it had gone on much longer he would have de-Christianized a bit more. He, he very often invoked yes. Christianity. Very and often. And certainly um, yes. um, providence. He was always talking about... about yeah. Oh providence. yes, he thought like a Catholic in many ways and yes. he never renounced 
That's Goebbels right. renounced, but as we know, he wanted to marry a woman, Magda, who was both Protestant and a divorcee. Yes. He gets teased in Hitler's table talk for having to yes. renounce the... Wasn't he the only one excommunicated? As far and, as we know, and, they and told him... for that him, reason only. It wasn't bell, book and candle, but they said, you can't be in communication with the church anymore if you do Because this. of the divorce, yes. but not, not because of the horrors that... The divorce and the Protestantism. Yes. yes. Now, admittedly, that's early in his time as campaigning in Berlin. He's not then... I don't think he's Minister of Propaganda then. Yes. But it shows the cast of mind. Yes. And the Catholic Centre Party voted for the Enabling Act. I mean... Yes. This is all complete fog of nonsense. It, it, it is, and as you it's say, bad, there's absolutely bad history no logical and connection. Bad history and it's yeah. bad propaganda. And bad, and bad logic, because bad there's logic. no connection between atheism and doing horrible things, whereas there easily can be a connection, yeah. as we see with modern Islam. Whereas to the extent that it's a new religion, Stalin worship or Kim Il-Sungism, Yes. And so on, we, like all atheists, regard it with horror. Yes. So don't talk to us about the way it mutates. No, indeed. Um, but I think you would still have to say, they wouldn't be able to deny it, that there was something specifically Catholic about the movement that we call Roman Catholic, about the movement that we call um, fascism. Yes. Which is the weaker version. Yes, yes. Um, when you debated with Tony Blair, um, I, I'm not sure I've actually watched that. I, I, oh, well, you don't have to. I, I, I love listening to you. I can't bear it. Well, I mustn't say that. Well, I know you're much more uh, hostile to the Prime Minister. No, I, I'm, I actually, uh, I, I think he did come over as rather, rather nice in that, on that he evening. He was charming that evening. Didn't yeah, he, yes. he was very nice. Um, and did, during the day as well. Did, did you, um, uh, well, okay, what, what was your impression? of? Um, well, someone who, here's what I, I, you can only have one aim, I think, in per, per debate. I actually had two in debating with, with, with Tony Blair, which was, the first one was to get him to admit, this is not done, the evil stuff we complain of, in the name of religion, that's yes. a cop out. The authority is in the text. Second, I wanted to get him to admit, if possible, that giving money to charity or organizing charity doesn't vindicate a cause. It's not really a point at all in its favor. No. Though it may be a nice observation. Well, I got him to the first one. Yes. And I admired his honesty because he was asked by the interlocutor at about half time which of Christopher's points we were both asked right. strikes you as the best. And he yes. said, Well, I have to admit he's made his case. He's right. This stuff, there is authority for it in the canonical texts yes. of Islam and Judaism yes. and so on. Well, at that point, I'm ready to fold. I've done what I did for yes. the evening. Yes. For the rest, we did debate whether Catholic charities or so on were. A good thing and I said well they are but they don't prove any point and some of them are only making up for damage done for example the church had better spend a lot of money doing repair work on its AIDS policy in Africa to have told people the condoms in all cases don't prevent but in some cases it even said condoms may spread um, disease well some condoms may but we'll get to that it's iniquitous for them to have done. Absolutely. And has led yeah. to a lot of people dying yes. horribly. Yes. Um, also, I've never taken a very close look at the ground operations of these charities except Mother Teresa. But they do involve a lot of proselytization. They involve telling people, you know, that other, other religions, uh, you'll go to hell. Um, they involve a lot of propaganda. They're not just giving out free stuff and medicine. They're, they're doing work to recruit for the cause and that's you know that's up to them and, and, and mother Teresa was one of the worst offenders to, to, to that um, well she also preached she also preached that poverty was a gift from God yes she took money from very rich people who'd famously exploited the poor notably the Duvalier family in yes. Haiti uh, she endorsed um, a, a number of you know, horrible enterprises of that kind um, and believe, this is the crucial thing, I, should, I always leave the crucial thing to the last, that, that um, women should not be given control over their own cycle of reproduction in any form. Yes. She preached that um, contraception was the moral equivalent of abortion, which she says is a murder. She went to Ireland to intervene in a, in a campaign, a referendum that forbade divorce by the Irish constitution to keep that clause. 
further keeping women shackled. And we know that there's a cure for poverty if you ask us. I mean, yeah. we don't say it as atheists, just yeah. in passing, we happen to know that if you give women control over their reproductive cycle, and you go back to that village in a few years, the, the floor will have increased, it will, have, yes, it will be better. Yes. And if you give them a few grains of rice and a bit of a, a, some fertilizer and so on, break the hold of sort of millennial patriarchy on the thing, it works. Mother Teresa spent her whole life making sure that the one cure for poverty we know is sound was not implemented. How do you think she got to this sort of, sort uh, well, of ha hagiography, the, the, the almost worship of her as a, as a beyond question sort I actually know how it was it. done because it's in my book and you can look it up. Um, I wish is that the would. Malcolm Muggeridge story? She had a fantastic stroke of luck with the BBC, with Malcolm Muggeridge and with, a, yeah. and with really interesting this, with a bogus miracle. The, the, the Kodak film. That the Kodak film had yes. worked, yes, which yeah. has been exploded by the cameraman who took the... Yes. The very cameraman who took the film. Yes. But by the time Something Beautiful for God had been transmitted, and made it into a book, and by the time the church had realized, because I think they looked at her a bit askance as a fanatic till then, because she was a great campaigner against Vatican II, you know, when it came up. Yes. Among Indian Catholics, she said, this is yes. backsliding. Yeah. They'd realized, this is perfect. We have a heroine who is admired by all non-Catholics, and even by some non-believers. I mean, it's too good a chance to pass on. So the Malcolm Muggeridge kindly light was sort of the the moment when she took off in terms of... That was the refulgence of her PR triumph, yes. Interesting, I know. I so Tony Blair knows this, I believe, but he doesn't have an answer. If I say, your church preaches against the one cure for poverty, he doesn't deny it, but he doesn't affirm it either. But remember, I did start with a text because it was a debate about religion, not about civil society. Yes. And I asked him to comment on it first, and he never did. And it's from Cardinal Newman, it's in the transcript. Yes. Where Newman said he would rather that the whole world and everyone in it be painfully destroyed and condemned forever to eternal torture, rather than that one sinner should go unrebuked for the stealing of a sixpence. Oh, I forget, it's so baroque that Newman you can't. Newman said that. Yes. And it's right there in the center of the apologia. The man whose canonization Tony had been campaigning for. Yes. Now you put, you put these discrepancies in front of him and he's like all the others. He keeps two sets of books, it seems to me. Yes. And this is also, even in an honest person, shady. It's, too, it's like two minds really, isn't it? I mean, mm. one notices this with some scientists who- Well, you have to have it. It's like your, it's like your young earth geologist. That's right. Um, um, <coughs> How do you think they do that? That's beyond my comprehension. Well, Other I think people... we all do it a bit. Do we? But I think we're all in. We're all great self-persuaders. Yes. It's one of our adaptability. But do we hold means, flat contradictions in our heads at the same time? We way? like to think that our colleagues would point them out. Yes. In our group, anyway, yes. I think. Yes. Well, could I mean, I, I don't on... believe anything that is completely. I mean, no one's pointed out to me in reviewing, say, my God book. Yes. God is not great. They've never said. And there's a flat discrepancy between the affirmation he makes on page X and the affirmation he no, makes. No, They've not done that. No. I think I have enough enough enemies, or people who wish but me they, ill. But they do accuse you of, um, in, uh, as a contrarian, which you've called yourself. Well, no, I haven't. I've disowned it. You've disowned I mean, it. I was asked to address the idea of it. Okay. And I began by saying, it's got grave shortcomings as an idea, but. <laughs> I am a bit saddled with it, I suppose. You are a bit saddled with it. I mean, I, I've always been very suspicious of the <coughs> left-right dimension in yes. politics. Um, yes, well, it's broken down with me. Psy psychologists, you know, classify personality. They need dozens of dimensions. I mean, of one, one won't do. No, um, it won't do but actually, me. it's astonishing how, how much um, traction the left-right continuum, you, if, if you know what somebody thinks about the death penalty or generally, abortion, yes, you yes. generally know what they think about everything else. It, it's but breaking when, down, but you yes, clearly you can, break, yes. break, break that, that rule. And yeah. Well, I think I have one consistency, and it bears on our conversation, which is there are honourable enemies of the, of the totalitarian. Yes. On left and on right. Yes. And I've, I've attacked, as it were, I have 
the totalitarian to me is the enemy, the one that's absolute. Yes. That wants control over the inside of your head. Yes. Not just your actions and your taxes and so forth. E e e yes. And, and, you and the origins of that are theocratic, obviously. Yeah. Yes. The beginning um, of that is the idea that there's a supreme leader or infallible pope or chief rabbi or whatever it may be who can speak for, ventriloquize the divine and tell us what to do. And that has secular forms with gurus and um, dictators, of course, but it's essentially the same. And there have been some thinkers, Orwell's preeminent, was then on the left, but many on the right have understood the idea of there is, unfortunately, in Asian humans, a slight tendency, to, a strong tendency, somewhere, to worship. Yes. To become abject. Yes. So we're not just fighting, I think, the dictators themselves and the people who would like ownership and control, have an absolute power, divine right of kings, say. We're criticizing our fellow humans for trying to often shortcut, make their lives simpler by surrendering giving up their freedom and saying, all right, in return, you offer me bliss, you offer me a design that turns out to be all about me with me in mind. Of course, I'll give up some of my mental freedom for that. Yes. And we say it's a false bargain. Yeah. You'll yes. get neither. Yeah. yeah. You're a fool. It's a preposterous idea. But we can't say true. we're just speaking for the people against the dictators. No. We are. We're confronting a certain section of, of, you know, opinion that, is unfortunately too pliable. But that part of you which was, or is, of the radical left, yes. um, was always against the totalitarian dictators. Yeah, I mean, I was, if it's of interest, and some people on the left reading this would know what I was talking about. I mean, I was a member of what was called loosely a Trotskyist group. In other words, we were very anti. For us, the socialist movement could only be revived if it was purged of Stalinism. Yes. Yes. We did our best. It wasn't too bad. We were defeated. Ultimately, in the sense that Stalinism was defeated, but not by us. Yes. Yes. But yes. the original critiques of Stalinism come from people like Bertrand Russell. His is actually the best and the first uh -huh. of Leninism. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, continued by Trotsky, by Victor Serge, C.L.R. James. Some people will remember these names. Um, George Orwell, of course. Yes. Left opposition. Yes. It's yes. an imperishable. You could build yes. a shelf yes. of really yes. titanic and noble intellectuals. There's a minds. disgraceful set of, of scientists, actually, who were so loyal to the left that they swallowed even... The biology. I mean, Lysenko. I was going to say Lysenko. Yes. Well, there's another way in which it was a religious state, by the way. Yes. Lysenkoism provided miracles. Yes, indeed. He would produce manna from heaven. Yes. He could make agriculture work in yes. supernatural ways. I, mean, I never thought of that. That's I, a, I, a I have mentioned error. it in one of my critiques. Yes. yes. No, nothing is spared. Yeah. Um, uh, Inquisition trials, borrowed straight from, completely borrowed whole cloth. Inquisition trials, worship of the infallible dear leader, yeah. fear of the devil without, yes. permanent yes. enemy, yes. Manichaeism. There's an utterly chilling book. And, and, and Lysenkoism for miracles. Yes. There's a, there's a book Don't called forget the, to the put Situation. That in because it's, yes. I will do. The Situation in Biological Science Today, an astonishingly boring title. And I don't know whether you've seen it, but it's a, it's a long collection of transcripts of trials of geneticists um, by the Lysenko re regime. Well, I know they took and place. One after another, they confess, that, that confess their errors, they confess mm. their, their Mendelist, Morganist heresies. It's, it's exactly oh, yes. like the Inquisition. And in fact, even into my own time, one of the Medvedev brothers, either Jaurès or Roy, Soros, I think it was, was a biologist in Russia yes. in the Brezhnev years. And in the academy, he fell afoul of a rump of Lysenkoets. Yes. Tried to obstruct his work. It, it, the taint goes on for quite a long yes. time. Yes. It's very much a point for our view that Stalinism it, it, was it, a theocracy. I, I never thought of it. it, it, it that, that no, miracles nice. by all yeah, means. Miracles, absolutely. By all means, miracles. Um, miracles as long as you have faith. It's almost like sort of Two, two loaves and five fishes, or whatever it was, ma manufacturing, yeah. It's um, exactly that. Um, so I think we've dealt that a pretty hard blow. Yes, I think so too. Um, one, of the, one of my main beefs with religion is the way they label children as, oh as a Catholic child or a Muslim child. And uh, I, 
almost become a bit of a bore about it, but only no, today... No, you must, you must not risk... You must never be afraid of that charge, by the way, no. any more than stridency. No, OK, OK, thank you've, you. You've I, done I a lot. Will, I will done. remember that. May I say on stridency now? If I was strident, it doesn't matter. I'm a jobbing hack, you know, and I bang my drum. You have a discipline in which you're very distinguished. You've helped educate a lot of people. Nobody denies that, including your worst enemies. You see your discipline being attacked. Yes, that's And defamed. True. And yes. people, and attempts made to drive it out of the... Yes. Stridency is the least you should muster. Yes. It's the shame of your colleagues. Yes. That they don't say, listen, we're going to form ranks and defend our hard-won findings from these, these appalling, obfuscating elements. Well, I mean, thank you for saying that. that no, no, that, don't, that never let it... Don't, that that emboldens me. And, and, and if you, you go on about something, the worst thing the English will always say about you, as you, we yes. both know... Yeah. And as we can say of them, by the way, yes, is that they're boring. Yes, indeed. Well, don't be afraid. Right. Of it. You've got to bang um, on. Anyway, only this morning mm. I was sent um, a copy of a British government website, an official um, instruction, which yes. was called something like the, the responsibilities of parents. Yes. And some of them were right. unexceptionable, like to protect the child and mm. educate the child and so on. Yes. But one of them. Honey. Honey. Honey, what would you like? something like a Coke? Sure. Thank you. Something fizzy? No, I won't. Thank you. You sure? No, thank you. One of these, these items, like educate the child and protect it and so on, was determine the child's religion. Literally, the word determine, and obviously that, that doesn't it means mean... establish in this case. Means establish. Yeah, it means establish. Yeah. It means cause. It means... Um, yeah, but still. Um, it's a terrible way I to couldn't be. ask for a clearer illustration of exactly what... Because sometimes when I make my beef about this, yes. I'm told, oh, no, nobody nobody calls children Catholic children. Or, or well, the government does. The government does, absolutely. No, it's borrowed, as far as I can see, in part from British imperial policy, which is in turn often borrowed from Ottoman and previous empires. You classify your new subjects according to their faith. Yes, that's right. Um, yes. You know, you can and be, you you can be an Ottoman. India, according yes, to you, the yes. Faith. yes. You can be an Ottoman citizen, but you're a Jewish one or an Armenian yes. Christian one. Yes. What need do we have of that? Yes. And some of these faiths tell their children that the children of other faiths are going to hell. And I think we can't ban that. Nor can we exactly maybe even call it hate speech, which I'm dubious about anyway. But I think a wrinkle of disapproval should disfigure the... I would call upper... it child abuse. I would call it mental you child abuse. Well, um, it's not, it's not physical child abuse. I mean, I know many people, and I get letters from them, I, I do not boast, at least once a day, or emails, who say their childhoods were substantially wrecked by it. Yes. And they date their moment of emancipation from ceasing to fear either hellfire for themselves, yes. of course, or, in the more generous cases, Famously, Mary McCarthy's little book about Catholic girlhood, which you must read, refusing to have it said of other people. Yes. In her case, a favorite uncle. Yes. Because he was a Protestant, he was condemned forever. Yes. Which they told her when she was little. Yes. He was. Yes, yes. Well, this is I, an have a, I have a similar story, which was a woman wrote to me from America to say that when she was seven, um, she she was abused by her Catholic priest physically, sex yes. sexually, but at the same time, a little friend of hers, another seven-year-old child, had died, unfortunately. Oh, and the priest had told her that because this child was a Protestant, she was in hell. Well, and this woman said that of those two abuses, yes. the physical sexual abuse was less traumatic well, good for her. than the... Uh, because that... Good she for her. Got over I, that. I wish it got half the attention. Yes, yeah. Um, Yes, there's something wicked about that. I mean, of course, I mean, there is, I can't find a way as a libertarian of saying that people can't raise their children, as it were, as they say, according to their lights, but, well, but the there are things we don't, there are things we don't allow. Too. Yeah, the yeah, child I, has rights too. The child has rights and so does society, so we don't allow yeah. female, and I don't think we should really countenance male genital mutilation. Yes. We don't countenance heavy floggings anymore to drive out the devil. Jehovah's Witnesses and others who won't do blood transfusions or whatever it might be, Christian scientists, have been prosecuted. Yes. So we admit there are limits we to admit parental... there are limits, yes. Now, it would be very hard to say that you can't tell your child that they're lucky 
and they've joined the one true faith. I mean, I don't see how you stop it. I only think that the rest of society should look at that with a bit of disapproval, which it doesn't at the moment. It's more inclined to say... It's the right of a parent. And it's also the preservation of a culture or whatever it might yes, be. Yes, I think we're entitled to say, well, I'm not so sure. I mean, if you want to join a group like the Moonies, you can, but you have to expect that a lot of people will not take you very seriously. Yeah. Same if you're probably the same if you're a Mormon. If you really do run for office and say, which Romney hasn't directly been asked yet, but do you believe in the golden plates that were dug up by Joseph Smith? Sorry, you're going to get mocked. You're going to get laughed at. If That's you right. I mean, there is a tendency among liberals to feel that religion should be off the table. Or even that there's anti-religious sort of racism, which is, yes. I think, a terrible mutation. Yes. So, so Romney the... has questions to answer. And... Certainly he does. But there, isn't there a sort of unspoken After all, his, he rule in America to, he that you're not to a allowed church. to ask people that? He, well, the question of, was the, of Mormon racism did come up, to be fair. Yes. And the church did very belatedly make amends to say what it in effect been saying was black people didn't have souls weren't human quite yes yes they made it suspiciously timed you know for the passage of legislation but yes. they did do it well okay yes. then they grant the right of society yes. to amend yes to that extent their preachments but what about the sheer daftness of mormonism well i mean the the the, the fact that joseph smith was clearly a charlatan i know it's extraordinary isn't it um and and are we supposed to I mean, I think there is a convention in America, isn't there, that you don't, you don't tackle somebody about their, their yes, religion. Yes, and in a way it's a tribute to pluralism. Yes. And so to that extent one wants to respect it, but I think it can be exploited. I mean, and many people, including splinter group Mormons who still do things like plural marriage, and very repulsively a compulsory dowry marriage, they basically give away their... Yes, their often, daughters often as property. To, often to blood relatives. Yes, yeah. And also to kinship marriages that are too close to call, or, or close enough to call, cousinhood marriages in Britain among yes, um, um, some people. Yes. That this actually won't quite do. Um, but when it when it is brought up, they tend to take refuge in. You're attacking my fundamental right. I don't think they should really be allowed that. And that's private and mustn't be intruded upon. I think they've um, definitely crossed I, I, the civic if, line. If, if I could tell you an anecdote which, which rather surprised me because I hadn't come across this bit of American custom. Um, I was trying to find an extreme example which nobody could possibly deny of why somebody should be discriminated against because of their religion. And I chose a doctor. I, I made him an eye doctor but he d didn't believe in the sex theory of reproduction. He believes in the stalk theory that, that babies enough. come. And I said that this, this doctor should be struck off. This, 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 this doctor should not be allowed to practice and he should not be allowed to teach medical students. Okay. And I got kicked all around the room by American really? readers because they said it's a private matter. Mm. Um, and as long as he's a competent eye surgeon um, and as long as he keeps his loony beliefs to himself, um, so I then resorted yes. to an even more extreme example, which was a professor of geography who believed in the flat earth. Yes. And once again, as long as he teaches the round earth theory, he should be allowed to teach. And I felt he shouldn't because nobody wants to have a man who is so internally no. dishonest. No, I know. Yeah. It's so whimsical, Richard, that I almost feel we should allow just one or two of them. <laughs> yes. And keep them on a reservation. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't be bothered to hunt them down in a way. Yes. I mean, no, but I was only trying to find yes. an extreme in order no, to retreat know, from I that. Know, yes. okay, yeah. All right. I think we've done that. Okay. Um, have you had enough? Or, no, for heaven's sake. Okay, okay right. Started. Okay, right, fine. Um, we should continue through dinner. Do you think see. America is becoming a theocracy or is in danger no, of becoming I th a theocracy? No, I did. Good. I've, my view is this, that um, I've been studying them for a long time. The people who, people who we mean when we talk about that namely the extreme Protestant evangelicals who do want a God, a God run America and believe it was founded on essentially fundamentalist Protestant principles. I think they may be the most overrated threat in the country. Oh, good. Um, and it's historically true too, and Matthew has demonstrated it in his wonderful book about their defeat. They've been defeated everywhere, by the way. Yes, yes, yes. Why is this? In the 1920s, they had a string of victories um, 
They banned the sale and manufacture and distribution and consumption of alcohol. They, they passed, they amended the Constitution. Yeah. They banned the teaching of Matthew's great great grandfather's work. And they more or less managed to ban immigration from countries that had non Protestant, non white majorities. From these victories, they've never recovered. They'll never recover from prohibition. It was their biggest defeat. Yes. They'll never recover from the Scopes trial. Every time they try it, as Matthew's shown, and it's true in all instances, the local school board or the parents or the courts have thrown it out. And it's usually because, A, the work of people like you, who've shown that it's nonsense that they want to teach or give equal time to. They try and make a free speech question or they'll fail with that also. Or people don't want to come from the town or the state or the county, which gets laughed at. So that's where you think, you say you're from Arkansas, you know? Yes. In all my tours around the South, which have now amounted to a lot, debating with you, it's amazing how many people, Christians as well, want to disprove the idea that they're all enthralled to people like Fulwell. They don't want to be a laughing stock. Yes. And so if they, was, if they won and they were able to form a government, which I think is, is demographically impossible now, for them to have control of either house or the White House or the governor's mansions, I believe it's demographically impossible. Even in Dixie, they wouldn't be able to do it. And they passed an ordinance saying there will be prayer in school every morning from now on. One of two things would happen. It would be overthrown in almost no time by all the courts with barrels of laughter heaped over it. Or people would say very well, we're starting with Hindu prayer on yes, Monday. Yes, yes. Or Catholic. Yes, yes, yes. Or we're going to call in the rabbi. Yes. And make it all multicultural. Yes. They, they would regret it so bitterly that there are days when I wish they could have their own way for a short time. Yes. So they make good copy. I'm, I'm a journalist, I know. Any British correspondent in Washington on a slow week just has to get himself down into the Delta. He's got a story about some mad pastor. Yes, yes, yes. It's too easy. Oh, that's very cheering. I, I must say I'm I was I'm a bit more worried up. by the extreme reactionary nature of the papacy now. Yes. But that, again, doesn't seem to command very big allegiance among the American congregation. No. They're disobedient on contraception. Yes. Flagrantly. Yes. On divorce, on gay marriage to an extraordinary degree. I yes. 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 And only holding firm on, on abortion, which, in my opinion, is actually a very strong moral question and shouldn't be decided lightly. I, I feel very squeamish about. It. I believe the unborn child is a real concept. In other words, right. We needn't go there, but I'm. I'm not a complete abortion on demand. Fanatic, I think it requires a bit of reflection. But anyway, even on that, the, the, the Catholic communion here is very agonized. Yes. And also, you go and debate with them. Very few of them can tell you very much about what the catechism really is. It's increasingly a cultural catholicism. Yes, that, that, that is true, of course. So really, the only threat from religious force in America is the same as it is, I'm afraid, in many other countries, from outside. And it's jihadism, yes. some of it homegrown, but that is so weak and so self-discrediting that, I, again... It's more of a problem in Britain. I'm afraid, and in many other European countries. Yes, where in many other European countries. It's being, but it's here, too, it's being allowed... It's, it's alleged root causes of being allowed slightly too friendly an interrogation, I think. Well, yes. much too. Yes. I'll make that much too friendly, but... I think some of um, our friends... Um, are so worried about Islam that they're prepared to lend some kind of support to Christianity as a kind of bulwark against No, it. I know people who do that, and in yes. fact, there are many, I know many Muslims who, in leaving the faith, have opted to go, sometimes out of it altogether, out away from religion, but very often to Christianity, or via it, via it to unbelief. There's something I don't know what it is. Some of them say it's the personality of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. The mild and um, meek one, as compared to the rather farouche, physical, martial, yes. greedy, warlord. 
yeah. uh, Muhammad. Yes. And I can see that that might have an effect. Not much. Yes. Um, but that's fine. I mean, uh, there's bound to be a lot of religious syncretism. I mean, it happens everywhere. There are synthesized religions. I mean, do, you, do you ever worry that if we that if we win and 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 so, so to speak destroy Christianity, well, the vacuum will be filled by Islam? I mean, no, I don't. In a funny way, I don't worry that we'll actually win. I think all that we can do is make absolutely sure that people know that there's a much more wonderful and interesting and yes. beautiful alternative that doesn't involve the sacrifice of your critical thing. Yes, quite. Um, but it, of course, it, no, I don't think that Europe would fill up with Muslims as it emptied of Christians. No. No. And I think Christianity has almost defeated itself in that, it's, again, it's become a cultural thing. Very, very few people really are believing Christians in the way they were a generation or more ago. Certainly in Europe that's true, but in America? I mean, well, we, there were revivals, of course, and yes. the, the Hmong Jews as well. But I think there's a fairly long-run uh, tendency in the developed world and in large areas elsewhere for people to see the virtue of secularism the separation of church and state, yes, yes. because they've tried the alternatives and they yes. really aren't. Yes. I mean, every time something like a jihad or a sharia movement has taken over any country, admittedly they've only been able to do it in very primitive cases, it's a smoldering wreck with no, no productivity. No, that's right. Everything wrong with it, Afghanistan, the ruins of Somalia. failure, yes. Um, in many countries, you know, they decide not to try it. I mean, Indonesia, there are yes. always people who try to do it, yes. but I, I think they're, they're yes. also quite... The, there's some <clears> data, <throat> if you look at, at religiosity across <clears throat> countries of the world, and indeed across the, the states of, of the United States, you find that, that religiosity tends to correlate with poverty and with various other yes. indices of social deprivation and so on. Well, that's also in a way what it feeds on. That's what it feeds on, but... Um, but I don't it, want to condescend about that. No. I mean, I think I know a lot of very educated, very prosperous, very thoughtful people for whom their faith is somehow necessary, and I don't think of them as peasants who you know, go down on their knees in front of icons. Do you though think they, they, they really are, believe Though they are, though I do attack them for being willing to believe absurd things. But are, are, are they just kind of spiritual who sort of vaguely think there must be something out well, there, rather, rather than yes, actually believing in... but I think for some of them it's, it's absolutely real. Yes. William Buckley, who I knew quite well, who was yes. a, major, a major mind in many ways. Yes. And a great person to debate with. If you debated with William Buckley, you'd had a debate. He was once asked at a dinner table, can you make a statement that you think is completely irrefutable, couldn't, that can't be challenged? And he said, yes, I can. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Gosh. Now, if that's real to Bill, and it's in a very strange way, it's indirectly real to me, just as the people in, in, in William James's Varieties of Religious Experience, if they think it that strongly, their belief is a material force in my life. They can make it come true. They can say, you know, we want people to forswear um, contraception. They can, we can yes. pass a law that, you know, they can... Yes. So I only begin to quarrel with them when they want their beliefs to be adopted by others. And they say they don't, but the fact is there is a mandate in all their faiths to spread it. Yes. And they're delinquent if they don't. They're even delinquent if they don't try and save us. Yes, they are. Yes. Because they can't just sit and watch us no, going to the burning. That's right, yes. Yeah. Um, and nor should we, of course, abandon them. But um, I think what we can do is say, look, we can, we can offer you anything as long as you won't give up. As long as you won't give up your critical faculties. We cannot make you happy to that extent. Yeah. But we can offer you tremendously interesting, ever-expanding horizons of inquiry. Yes. Um, beautiful conjectures that some of them turn out to be factual. Enormous strides in human welfare. From medicine to biology, or medicine via biology. We just can't surrender our doubt and our feeling that this whole extraordinary process may not have us in mind. In fact, almost certainly does not. Yes. Do you think... Um, Jefferson, Madison um, were deists, as is often said, or, or um, I, I, I've read that you thought that I think they fluctuate, it's one by one. Yes. With Jefferson, who's the one I can, I'm happy to pronounce on. Yes. 
publicly he was a deist. By the way, to go to my point about the um, fundamentalists, it's the reason he won the election against others is probably he was suspected of being an atheist, or at best a deist, because why? Adams was a known Presbyterian. Right. All the other sects preferred Jefferson to the Presbyterian despotism. Okay, yes, 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 okay. It was pointed out to him, and, Madison, and, and Adams realized. He said, at the polls, all the congregationists, the Baptists, they all voted for you, Thomas. Not for me, because they knew my, they'd rather have someone they suspect of being an atheist adulterer. Yes, yes. So remember, they've got that big disadvantage yes. too. Um, and remember what I always say by my man, I'm at it. When Jefferson describes the wall of separation between church and state, it's in a famous letter he wrote as president. It's not in the Constitution. No. Because the, the Baptists of Danbury, Connecticut, had written to him saying they felt persecuted in their home state. Yes. And he wrote to assure them. Do you know who he was assuring them about? Why did they want a letter from the president? Why? They were being persecuted by the Congregationalists yes. of Danbury, Connecticut. Yes. Who had theocratic yeah. power in yeah. that state at that yeah. time? They owned the state. Yeah. Yes. So it's to defend religious pluralism. Yes. But anyway, I think the furthest he would go in public was to incline to a theistic Enlightenment view. But in his private correspondence, he's much, he goes much further. Yes. He says he wishes he, we could return to the wisdom of more than two thousand years ago. That's in his discussion of his own Jefferson Bible, where he cuts out, yes, yes, cuts out the, everything yeah. supernatural relating to Jesus. Yes. He what also, but he also, very importantly, he, say, he says to his nephew, Peter Carr, who writes to him, this is a private letter. Yes. Should I believe, what should I believe? Jeff says, you must make the most stringent inquiries. Yes. You may have read it. I, 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 um, even, even questioning God. Yes. And yes. If you, and then he says, and you may find that you're convinced, and if so, great happiness I hope will attend you, but you may find that you're without belief, in which case you may be surprised by how much contentment. Yes, now, that can only good. be written by someone who's had that experience. That is, that is very good, isn't it? In my judgment. It's an internal reading, but, yes. but I think it's a close one. And people who've had that experience don't tend to go back on it. No. There was certainly no priest at his bedside. No, that's right. But he did violate a rule of C.S. Lewis's, where I'm on Lewis's side. If you want me to tell you. Yeah. Lewis says that it's a cop out to say Jesus was a great moralist. Yes. It's just that one thing we must not say is a wicked thing to say. If he wasn't the Son of God, he was a very evil imposter. And his teachings were vain and fraudulent. You may not take the easy route here and say he may not have been the Son of God, he may not have been the Redeemer, but he was a wonderful moralist. No. No, okay. Lewis is more honest than Jefferson at yes, this point, I yes. think. I admire uh, Lewis for saying that. Yes. Rick Perry said it the other day. Yes. When I mean, he was, Jesus could just have been mistaken. He could. It's not unknown for people to have the illusion that they're yes. God or the Son yeah. of. It's a common delusion. Yes. And the, the untreated illnesses like epilepsy and so on in those days. But again, I don't think we need to condescend. No. Okay. I mean, Rick Perry the other day when he was asked, he, he had once said, not only do I believe that Jesus was, was my personal saviour, but I believe that those who don't are going to eternal punishment. He was challenged at least on the last bit. Yes. He said, well, I don't have the right to alter the doctrine. Yes. I can't say yes. it's fine for me yes. and not for others. Yes. It's in the... Well, so really, we ought to be on the side of well, these Well, not on the side, but I think we should say that there's something about their honesty that we wish we could always find. Yeah. Which we don't in our, get in bishops and... In our um, soft-centred bishops yes, of Oxford exactly. and other people. Yeah, yes. yes, exactly. Yeah. Why do, I mean, I've often asked why it is that this republic, um, founded in secularism, is so much more religious than those Western European countries which have an official state religion, like Scandinavia and Britain. For that reason. I, that's what I've always thought, yes. Because it's... I do think de Tocqueville has it exactly right. If you want a church in America, you have to build it by the sweat of your own brow, and many have, and that's why they're attached to them. Yes. Greek Orthodox community arrives from Piraeus in Brooklyn. What's the first thing it will do? It'll build itself a little shrine to the Hagia Sophia. Yes. Of course the Jews, not all of them, the Jews, the Jews most remarkably abandoned their religion very soon after arriving from the shtetl, but I think they'd had the most 
Orthodox. But are you saying most Jews have abandoned their religion? Well, increasingly, America's... Well, I'll come to this. It's also yeah. the place where people abandoned yeah. it. But most Jews have began by building a shul when they came here. Yeah. The government wasn't going to help them. And Jefferson and Madison had early on decided when they wrote the Statute on Religious Freedom that becomes the First Amendment, the government's not going to pay. So the attachment will be greater in the first place. And good, it's, it's a voluntary principle. And you can't make anyone else join. And you can't tithe people to no, keep it going. No. So what could be more natural? So if, for example, it happened in Washington the other day, it's a for example, but I think there was a fire in some mosque near Ramadan. Yes. Practically every house of worship in the area offered the Muslim community their premises, including really? the synagogue. Really? Yes. Brought round food, you know how it goes. Yes. And it becomes semi-charitable, a lot of it. Yes. So there's that, but I also would add, many came to escape religious persecution and didn't want to replicate it, and that's a strong memory. The Jews very quickly secularized when they came. American Jews must be the most secular force on the planet now. Yes. As a collective, if they are a collective, which they're not really. But some of them, while not being religious, still observe the Sabbath and that kind of thing. I guess is it, there's got to be something. To there's got to be something. I, I go to Passover. Yes. Um, every year, or sometimes even have a Seder, because I want my child to know. She does come very distantly from another tradition. That yes, but you, but you wouldn't why refrain grand, from switching why grand, the light switch grand, on. Grand, I mean. No, I don't do that, but very few do. <laughs> yes. It would explain if she'd met her great-grandfather, Yes. why he spoke Yiddish and so forth. I mean, it's cultural, but... Uh, by the way, I think the Passover Seder is also a Socratic forum. The questions are asked by the young. Yes. The book is passed from hand yes. to hand. Yes. Yes. It's dialectical. It's accompanied by wine. Yeah. Um, it's got the bones of quite a good discussion in it. Why not? It yeah. would be hard to give up. And then I think there is manifest testimony. I, mean, I think people feel America is just so lucky. Between two oceans, filled with minerals and wealth and beauty. It does seem providential to many people. Yes. yes. And that belief... Promised land, city been built on the hill and so on. For all that. Yes. The, the desire for another Eden. Yes manifested repeatedly, of course, by the Mormons again. Some quite heroic stories involved in doing it. Yes. Some secular utopians came here, you remember, the Robert Owen people, with the same idea, the New Harmony communes. And, yes. Um, Thomas Paine and others all thought of America as a great new start for the humanities. Yes. And the human species. One doesn't want to completely despise it. that was all that. secular. I mean, uh, uh, A lot of it was, yes. but you know, it, it, it has to, it was always expressed you can't get away from the liturgy, unfortunately. It's yes. too powerful. Yes. You, you, will, you will end up saying things like promised land. Yes. And re again, um, I don't... It can be mobilized for sinister purposes, you know. America first. Yeah. Bullying, so forth. Yeah. What people call cowboyism and so forth. But in a lot of cases, it's a fairly mild belief. It's just we should yes. share our good luck. Yeah. I've heard another theory, which is that America being a country of immigrants, mm people coming from Europe, where they left their extended family, left the support system yes. alone, and, and they, they need a, something equivalent to an well, extended sh family. Surely, that's the church that's, it. surely that was contained in what I just... Maybe it was, yes. About the immigrant, the first thing they'll do, the top villain. Yes, that's right. So it's a voluntary principle. Now, yes. the reason why most of my friends and non-believers, I would say, I have been since I was quite young, since we were of school age, is not because they've engaged particularly in the arguments you and I have been having with such enjoyable results, but because they were made indifferent to compulsory religion. Yeah. At school. I mean, it's as but simple as that. And, and they had enough of it. Yes. They took from it occasionally whatever they needed. Yes. If you need to get married, you know where to yes. go, blah. Yes. Some of them, of course, are religious. Some of them like the music. But yes. generally speaking, the British people and I think the evidence is majority of people, or large proportion of people in France, Germany, or England, yes. are benignly indifferent to religion. Yes. And, and the fact that there is an established church in, in, increases that effect. It's designed to do so. Designed Not that we really have to pay a tax that we notice, but I noticed in Germany recently where the tax is quite onerous and you do have to opt out. Yes, you have to positively opt out. Well, they are doing. Yeah. In large numbers, partly because of the clerical abuse. 
but partly, I think, because they want a secular state as well. Yes. Um, and it doesn't help that the German authorities would rather do the opposite, as with the blasphemy law, fine. Instead of reducing to extend it, and say we'll give this, you can also give now to a synagogue, soon it'll be a mosque. I would say no, there should be no tax of any kind. No, quite. Um, but that's for them to determine. And churches shouldn't be tax free the way that they are. Not as far not as I can see. Anyway. No, it's certainly not, no. no. Or if they are, as I say here. If they're going to, if they, if the churches demand that equal time be given to creationist or pseudo-creationist speculations here, which is the way they now phrase it, they used to say when they could ban it, they could, and did. Then when they couldn't ban it, they said they wanted equal time for it. Now people like Bush say, teach the controversy, which I'm yes. in favour of teaching, of course, in the history class. In the history class, in the history of ideas. And so then they say, and politics, because the Scopes trial is public yes. then. Um, but then they say, you know, we want it to be taught, well, fine. But any, any church that teaches that in its school, that is in receipt of any federal money from the faith-based initiative, yeah. must, by law, also teach Darwinism and the alternative teachings yes. in real time in order that the debate is being taught. Yes. I don't think they want this. No. But it's the next suit that we will but bring. But if they do, they, they, they teach Darwinism in a very inadequate way. And, and well, we could, we could combat that, but we would be able to say these materials must be, you know. Yes. I don't think they want that counterstroke, and that's my proposal. That that's what we do. Yes. That, Tell them they jolly might, well, if they want well equal work. time, yes. then that's the American yes. way. Yes. We'll jolly well have it. That's why they've always been against teaching comparative religion, because they don't want people to know how silly. I know. That, that's a big thing. Yes. Comparative religion would be one of our best weapons, I suppose. Well, it's, it's a very big one here. Yes. Yes. But I have to say, it's got so insipid in parts of America now that a lot of children are brought up because their parents don't do it and leave it to the schools, and the schools are afraid of it. Yes. With no knowledge of any religion of any kind. Yes. And you know, funnily enough, why do the English say, funnily enough? What's well, funny? We just do. I find that a little irksome and worrying. I would like children to know what religion is about. Because if they're completely... Yes. I if, you, agree. if you take them, as it were, ex nihilo with no... I agree. Some guru or cult... Yeah. ...or fake revival could come along and sweep them they up... They would be vulnerable. They so. wouldn't know... Yes, that's right. What the, I also would like them to know the Bible for literary reasons. Precisely. Yes. And no, that's another reason why I try and instruct mine in this, because, well, I, we both, I was pleased to see, wrote pieces about the King James. Yes, yes, we did, that's right. The AV, as it was called in our boyhood, and I couldn't yes. be with, I couldn't be with, or the Cranmer. Yes. The Cranmer prayer book. And yes. um, there's a, there would be a huge, amount, a huge yes. amount of English literature that would be somewhat opaque if people didn't know. Absolutely, yes. And, and have then, you read some of the modern translations? Oh, well. Futile, said the preacher, utterly futile. It's, uh, does he really? <laughs> he doesn't. does, honestly. No, that's too good. Futile, futile, said the preacher. It's all futile. That's Lamentations. No, it's um, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Vanity, so vanities. Vanities, um, vanities. Yes. Good um, God. That's the least religious book in the Bible. It, I know. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Yes. God, how funny. Yes. We've kind of that's run out the, of time. That's the um, one that Orwell wanted at his funeral. I bet he did. Or I if guess. he didn't want it. No, I think he did what he certainly got it. There's a marvelous Via Anthony things Pohl in there. and others. Marvelous yeah. things. Um, I sometimes think the poetry comes from the obscurity of, of probably mistranslation. Um, when the sound of the grinding is low, and the grasshopper, uh, I said the, yes. the grasshopper is heard in the land. No, in the, land, the, the grasshopper it shall be burdensome. I mean, what the hell? I, I think I do know what that and means. The, I think the, it's the bowl broken at the system. That, that's wonderful. Yes, fantastic. And. Um, um, dead no. flies um, cause the ointment of the apothecary to stink, or something like yes, that. Yes, yes. Cast thy bread upon the waters. I suspect and the Book of Job, which is the other great yes, yes. non-religious one, I always feel. Man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. I try and do without that. Yes, yes. No, I'm glad we're on the same page. Yeah, yes, very much so. Uh, um, people tell me that the recitation of the Quran 
can have the same effect if you understand the original Arabic. The Arabic I, yes. I wish I did. I, I can only say it doesn't to a non-Arab ear. No. Or not mine. Um, and nor does the Tridentine Mass. Some of the Catholic liturgy, I think, is attractive, but... Yes. It's, there's something I, I don't have enough Latin to, to, um, to judge that. Sometimes one has just enough to be irritated. Yes. <laughs> I've always felt that the Catholics made a big mistake when they left Latin because when people oh. would understand what nonsense it was, they... they um, there's no doubt that a lot of Catholics, including Buckley, realised, and even in war, yes. realised at once they 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 very nearly committed suicide. In the, same, in the same way, yes, yes, his last novels are really all about the death of the old faithful Catholic England in its yes. dead seventies. Yes. And in real life, he realised the Second Vatican Council was the finish for his lot. Yes. And just as Auden and others realised when the New English Bible and that sort of thing started being promulgated. I believe it's true, Auden said at some point, why spit on your luck? Yes. yes. You had, and C.S. Eliot said, something absolutely marvellous, it's in my piece, I quote it, about the, the way the Anglicans were torturing themselves yes. and ruining what they'd got, yes. their finest things. You were yes. pausing for some purpose. Well, I think we ought to, I think perhaps we've got enough. I mean, I've, I have some other things I want to if talk you about. If you say so, we could do that at dinner. I'm very happy. I mean, I wanted to ask you about American politics, but perhaps that, that's not relevant you know, to the I'd, States. I'd almost rather not. Yes, okay. Not particularly. Au courant of them. I haven't got anything special I want to say, in other words. No, okay, okay. Um, um, let me just look down. Am I down. presuming that your issue is, is it all about the struggle for secularism? Well, no, I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose that they probably may think it is. Um, well, they, they it, must It is have. the Christmas issue, and I... I um, well, then, then you should make it, obviously, a satire on religion. Could, I mean... But it could, needn't be all dogma, but I mean... Could we talk about, I mean, is there anything, I can't think about Christmas, it doesn't sort of mean anything to me, but I, well, can you say anything about Christmas that would, that, um... Well, yes, I mean, but we have nothing that the customers don't know. I mean, there was going to be a winter solstice holiday, for sure. And yes. The, the dominant religion was going to take it over. Take it over, whatever. And that would have happened without Dickens. Yes. And without others, there are various different kinds of Christmas. And, There's and no authority in the Bible for... It's taking place in winter. In no, fact, there's some, no, none some of that. to the contrary. Um, Christmas tree comes from Prince Albert, the Tamil yes. um, um, the, the shepherds and the wise men are all made up. That's right. Um, and didn't seem to know what to do after they'd finished. Um, there was, well, Cyrenius wasn't governor of Syria. No, that's right. All of that. Um, yes. I but that increasingly, in fact, it secularized itself. I mean, that's what people complain of. Yes. It's happy holidays. I don't particularly like that either. That's horrible, isn't it? Happy holiday season. No, I, I, it's, I'm afraid all this is kind of wheat gruel to me. But, the, but I prefer I, our yes. But the, stuff the happy about holidays the was pandering to Jews, not to not to atheists. Originally, Surely. it was pandering to Hanukkah. Yes, that's actually, right. it was Jews pandering yes. to Christians. That's right. It was Jews overinflating the nearest holiday that they had. It's partly their fault than in America. The damn thing is more like Ramadan, it starts so early. Because Hanukkah is actually quite early in December. Yes. But Ramadan so, rotates, doesn't it, because of the faith yes, of the Yes, but I mean, I mean to say it's very long. Yes. So by the time it's over, people are exhausted. Yes. But you know, I would far rather talk about the battles we have. Yes. In the grand strategy, you know, yes. against jihadism and against... Yes, yes. Well, do you want, I mean, have, I mean, perhaps I should just say, have, have you got other things you'd like to say? Um, no, I'm no good when you do that either. No, no. If um, you feel you've got a good chunk, I couldn't well, be happier. Well, we've got an enormous amount. I mean, I, they're, they're going to obviously edit I couldn't, I absolutely could not be happier. If you think we've got too much and they have to edit, uh, then, then we can be sure they're only editing some good stuff, perhaps. I hope that's right, yes. Well, um, then let's have dinner. Okay, let's have dinner, that's fine. I'm not quite sure um, how I'm going to have it. Oh, yes? Well, I have to have a tube. It doesn't take long. Oh, okay. Let me see what Carol's got. Yes, okay. I'll, I'll see. Thank you. Well, this is done. I'll put the move first. Yes.